Uh, the <laughs> Cyborg Beetle Mini Drone is what we're going to talk about this morning. We have a picture of it, but first of all, who uses this and what does it do? So what is that? It's it a little, like a bug. It's a little beetle. It's a June, green June bug. How big is it? Uh, it's about the size of a centimeter. Um, I, I gather they can get a, bit, a little bit bigger, a little bit chubbier, but uh, in general they're about a centimeter. So genuinely tiny. And the driver here is this race for micro UAVs. So our, our viewers would be familiar with UAVs as probably drones. That's what they're often called in the media. Mm -hmm. It's really an unmanned aerial vehicle. So. There's been a, a, for a while now, there's been a race to try to get as small as possible. The UAVs that people here talked about are, are actually quite large. I think people think they're the size of a toy plane, but those ones that you hear talked about in the media all the time and used for operations, they're actually quite large. I mean, they look like a plane, you know, as opposed to what you might imagine a UAV would look like. Mm -hmm. um, so the race has been to make them micro, um, but when often I, you know, I get these calls like, oh, you've got to check out our new micro UAV, and when I show up to look at it, it's not so micro, arguably maybe mini, but not micro. I mean, I, what I'm seeing are... What's mini? Mini would be arguably, I know we can go back for this. Like this big? About, yeah, exactly, six inches. They're getting them under six inches, so we're on the same page on that one. Um, I don't think that's micro. I don't know what you think, ladies, but I wouldn't well, call that Well, that one micro. that you just showed us is definitely micro. <laughs> right. I mean, it would fit on my pen. Right. So the goal is to get it that size, and here's where the cyborg thing comes in, because some people believe, why not piggyback on nature? Why reinvent the wheel when you know, nature's oh, done such a fantastic job going micro all by itself? We've already got insects. All right, I, I have size. to ask this question, because yeah. you know the PETA people are going to email me. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I, I don't profess to be trying to save all the beetles of the world, right. but does it hurt the beetle? This is a concern of mine too, and it's one of the reasons it why. It is. I, yeah, I, really, you're concerned about the beetle. Look, I'm not okay. a. I'm not a. I'm not a. Big I could fan. not kill. <laughs> I saw a big cockroach in Grenada the other day. I couldn't kill it. Oh, really? Well, kind you're, of cute. You're, you're just the antlers. sweetest person I know. But anyway, <laughs> uh, okay. But we're we're gonna piggyback <laughs> off nature. Right. So the idea is piggyback, and that's kind of my polite way of saying turn them into cyborgs because really it is it's the merging of machine and tissue interface there mm -hmm. so it really the goal there is to make a, you know for some programs the goal is to genuinely make a can cyborg. Can we pop that picture back up for just a second? Right. So this is an actual beetle right? and it is the combination or what you just said crossing of tissue and technology. Right. This one I think is an early stage um, and if we if our viewers go to the dot com they'll be able to see that the fully cyborgized you know, this one's just got sort of like a mini backpack on right mm -hmm. now. Um, and the, uh, the professor has de devised this, this new version of locomotion, uh, sorry, of uh, scavenging energy. Uh, is calling it a tiny backpack. The idea is you could put a tiny backpack on these beetles uh, and equip them with all the sorts of things you'd want to see on a normal UAV. So this would be cameras, communication, uh, ability to monitor location. So that would be sort of GPS or navigation technology. Uh, sensors are key, and this is something that Mother Nature is very good at. Take bees. People don't know, but honeybees have it pretty much as good a sense of smell as dogs. So for years now, they've been using honeybees to detect explosives. Pretty cool. Los wow. Alamos Lab well, how do they laboratory. train them? I mean, how do they know? Oh, they're actually training, Ellen. No, no, but, but <laughs> so how do you, if you're looking at a jar of honeybee yeah. bees, how do you know what it's telling you. Right. Um, it's very cool. And maybe I should do a story on that. Um, oh, yeah. I think it's interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, back in 2006, Los Alamos uh, really broke a lot of ground there. And it's, it's Pavlovian training. And so uh, our viewers will be familiar with that. It's kind of dog, like the way you might train a dog, you know. Right. Um, very simple. And they're able to give an indication of good or bad, you know, sort of, ah, this is an explosive or, you know, we're all good here. I'm going to zoom along and check out another, say, baggage, you know, in an airport, that sort of thing. Wow. Um, that's not a cyborg program. Like, that's just to be clear. Are they in a jar when they do this? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just utilizing Are they just nature running around that, with their stinger? But a cyborg stinger. program is actually interfacing that tissue exactly. with technology. Yeah. Uh, win for me 77 says, what we need to do is turtle up and tech heavy. <laughs> I love our viewers. Uh, anyway, yeah. um, we but can that read more be about this. That could be a t-shirt. It, it could be. Yeah. Write that down, Ellen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we can read more about this and where? Uh, on our dot com, in the SciTech section, we have a specific, specific military page. Okay, so we go to <laughs> foxnews.com, we yeah. click on SciTech, and it'll take you to the specific yeah. military page. Uh, June Beetles, what does that say? Conscripted into Cyborg Army.